Good morning and welcome to this week's Reset for Life moment. Are you familiar with the term GOAT? Not, not the animal, but the term GOAT as it relates to athletes. It really refers to the greatest of all time. So let me quiz you. Who is the GOAT of basketball? That really depends who you talk to, of course, but definitely Michael Jordan and LeBron James need to be included in that discussion. Who's the GOAT of the NHL? That one, at least to me, is a little more obvious. Wayne Gretzky, who just lost his father Walter a few weeks ago, is unarguably the best hockey player of all time. Who's the GOAT of the NFL? I, I gotta admit, it pains me to say it, but it's probably Tom Brady. In other sports, Babe Ruth, Tiger Woods, Usain Bolt, Serena Williams, Muhammad Ali, and Michael Phelps all come to mind. When we say that they are the GOAT, we're saying that they are not just great at what they do, but that there is no one greater than they are. In our ongoing When God theme to these videos, today I want to talk to you about when God is great. Now, to clarify, there's never a time when God isn't great. In fact, this statement should remind us that God is great to the core of His being. The English term majesty actually comes from the Latin word that means greatness. And so when we say that the mountains are majestic, we're really acknowledging that how great they are. When we call the queen Her Majesty, we are saying that she is, ultimately, that's what we're saying. We're saying she's great. Majesty is a term that is more appropriately used to God. Psalm 93 verse 1 says that God is clothed in majesty. In other words, he's clothed in greatness. Two times in the book of Hebrews, in chapter 1 verse 3 and in chapter 8 verse 1, it says that Christ sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majesty or at the right hand of the majestic God. You know, the Bible also teaches us that God is very personal, that He's very gentle and patient, that He's sympathetic, that He's tender and loving towards humanity. Yet we should not lose sight of the fact that in the midst of all of these perhaps very human qualities, God is also still great. Though He is personal like us, He is great, which is very much unlike us. We're not eternal, we're not all-powerful, we're not all-knowing, and we're not all-present. Only God is. And His wisdom is unexhausted. His presence is unhindered. His power is unlimited. He is God who has made something out of nothing. God who literally spoke the worlds into existence. God who pronounces judgment justly, who loves completely, who forgives amazingly, and who plans perfectly. God is great because He's not limited by anything. Nothing, the Bible says in Luke 1.37, is impossible for God. Now that doesn't mean that God does everything that we want Him to do. It simply means that He is great in all that He does and in all that He is. And so the only natural response when we truly begin to see God for who He truly is, is that we should respond to that greatness with our worship. You know, when the term majesty is used of God, it's not just a declaration of His greatness, but it's also a call for us to worship. In Psalm, 30, uh, sorry, Psalm 48, verse 1, it reminds us both of the greatness of God and that He is worthy of our praise. Psalm 9, 95, verses 3 and 6 acknowledge that God is a great God, and as a result, the author then calls us to worship Him. As humans, we tend to worship things that are above us, not things that are below us. And that innate quality is put there by God so that we will long to worship Him, who is the greatest being ever. He is the goat, if you will, of everything. We need to be careful, though. We need to be careful to not define His greatness by our human uh, limited context or our human limited understanding. If we assume that God is great, just like our uh, favorite basketball player is or our, or our favorite team is great, then we actually limit God. We make Him smaller. If we assume that God is great compared to our own human abilities, again, we limit God. We need to be careful that though we don't have, uh, excuse me, we need to be careful that we don't have small thoughts about God. We need to be careful that we don't understand Him solely based on our small ideas about Him that we don't hold him to the same limitations of this world. He is in a class all by himself in terms of his greatness. We need to worship him for who he really is. If you want to know more or read more about the greatness of God, I'd encourage you to go to Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 31. It's really an incredible commentary on how great God is. In this section, God reminds us in verse 28 that He is an eternal God, that He is the creator of the whole earth, that He never grows weary or weak, and that no one can measure to the depths of His understanding.
Now, this may seem arrogant to you, but can I remind you that confidence and truth do not necessarily equal arrogance? God is simply stating a fact here. So before you limit God by your understanding of Him according to human limitations, take some time to read about who God really is. He is majestic and He is holy and He's definitely worthy of our praise. That's my Reset for Life word for today. God bless.